Hello and welcome to the brand new Adobe Photoshop CC. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe Systems, and it's my pleasure to walk you through my top five favorite features and what's new in Photoshop CC. Now, although I'm going to concentrate on my top five favorite features, that doesn't mean I won't throw in an extra feature or a bonus feature here and there that is a favorite, but didn't make the top five. And I'm actually going to start with one of those because it's important to know that a lot of times when people upgrade from one version of Photoshop to another, the first concern they have is, well, what about all my settings, my presets, my actions, my brushes, all the things I've been customizing all throughout Photoshop since I've been using it. Well, I have that concern too. And not only do I have that concern, I also have multiple computers. So with Photoshop CC, there's a brand new feature called sync settings. And when you first launch Photoshop CC, if you had Photoshop CS6, for example, it'll ask you, hey, do you want to import all your stuff from Photoshop CS6? And once you say yes, from that point on, you can go up to the Photoshop menu and you can say, manage sync settings, and you can control what it's going to sync. It can, it can sync over my preferences, my actions, my brushes, my styles, my tool presets, patterns, anything I've done. And if there's a conflict, maybe I've uh, you know, edited two things in two different places, it will ask me which one's the, um, which one should it bring in. So that was kind of cool because what happened is once I set up Photoshop, for example, all my retouching actions were there. All my other actions were there. I didn't have to worry about having to export and import those into this new Photoshop CC. So while that's not a top five favorite, it is a favorite. So let's get into the first favorite. And it's actually kind of one of the things that happens in Photoshop behind the scenes. A lot of it is like up front and in your face with new features, but some of it's just cool things that are happening in the background. And that is, for example, whenever I wanted to work on a photo in Camera Raw, I've always had to, if I had the photo open, close it and then reopen it using Camera Raw just to get the non-destructive, easy editing that Camera Raw offers. So here's what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is say filter, convert for smart filters. So that will convert this um, layer into a smart object. Now, all I have to do, my first favorite feature is use Camera Raw as a filter. I no longer have to close the image. It will actually let me bring Camera Raw up, and it's not just limited to raw images, JPEGs, or TIFFs. Basically, any layer I can have open in Photoshop can now come into Camera Raw as a filter. So I get the non-destructive workflow that I've always enjoyed with my raw files with any file, and it's even after the file's already open in Photoshop. Now, the next thing I'll do is head over to my second favorite feature, and that is under the lens corrections, we have this new upright feature. And what upright allows me to do is, you know, correct not only for the leveling of the photo, which we've had technology to do that for a while, but the perspective. If you look at this doorway, not only is it is the whole image crooked, because you can see the stairs kind of slanting up to the right, but the perspective of the doorway is off. So I can go in and I can say, well, if I just thought it needed leveling, just apply a level correction and that'll do it. But, and if I thought, well, maybe it just needs a vertical correction, apply the vertical perspective corrections and great. Or I can say, kind of do both, kind of turn the image and tilt it a little bit so it's kind of dead on. Now, if I thought that auto will kind of do everything I need, I can try auto and see a balanced approach to this uh, effect. So here's before and here's after with one click. And even if the one click doesn't do it just right for you, you can still go in and manually tweak it using the transformations here. So I can get it just right. And here, if I scroll down a little bit, scale it up to crop off that little corner on the left and click OK. And that has now been applied, but more importantly, it's been applied non-destructively as a smart object. And I can always double click to get right back into the camera raw settings. So camera raw is a filter, my first one. Second one is the upright feature. So now let's go ahead and take a look at my second one. The second one is kind of one of those where I do this balance between Lightroom and Photoshop and Camera Raw. And if, it, if I have to retouch a photo, typically I'm just going to go ahead and go into Photoshop because I know I can do everything. But of course, if I could do it all in Camera Raw or a lot of it in Camera Raw, that's going to be better because it's going to be non-destructive or with the develop module in Lightroom, it's gonna be non-destructive. So once again, we'll say filter, 
Camarasa filter. And one of the kinds of things I would do with, um, with camera, or I'm sorry, with Photoshop is heal parts of an image that aren't circular. So for example, in Photoshop or in Camera Raw, we've always had the ability to have a circular healing brush. And that's great for spots, that's great for sensor dust, but what if you wanted to correct something that's non-circular? For example, I wanna remove this tattoo. Well, now I can actually use the adjustment brush in a healing mode as a brush to make corrections that are non-circular. So it's great to have this ability now non-destructively in Photoshop CC. And again, I can do a lot more retouching than I ever could before using Camera Raw or the Develop module in Lightroom 5. All right, so let's head over to this next image. And this next one kind of blew me away because I, I discovered this totally by accident in this particular image. I shot this image a few years ago, and as you can see, it's a dark um, setting, dark church, where the only available light's coming in from a window near the ceiling. And it's lighting kind of the floor, the wall off to the right, and it's lighting that banister in the background. I kind of thought it'd be great to be able to add some more light to this image. So using the new radial filter, I'll go to my filter menu. I'll come down to, once again, camera as a filter. And the new radial filter allows me to go in and make corrections to an image or add um, corrections to an image in a circular fashion. So for example, if I come over here and I just want to uh, add this effect and I want to control the exposure in this spot. Well, it's controlling the exposure for everything but that spot. So all I'd have to do is go in and scroll down and simply say inside, not outside. So now when I control the exposure, I'm controlling the exposure for that particular spot where my uh, radio filter is. Now, of course, I can pick this up, I can move it around, I can tilt it, and you're probably thinking, well, Terry, isn't that like a vignette? And you're right. A vignette, though, is limited to, to a couple of things. Number one, you typically only do it from the center. Here I've got this off to the right. And number two, you only get to have one. Whereas with a radio filter, I can have as many as I need. And this is the one that kind of blew me away. When I exposed this area of the wall, I had no idea that there were words there. I probably saw them when I took the photo a few years ago, but I completely forgotten. And that data was still in the image, still captured from the camera sensor, but I had completely forgot it was there. And now with the new uh, radio filter in Camera Raw in Photoshop CC, I have the ability to add these adjustments. And it's not just exposure, it's contrast, highlight, temperature, uh, which is your white balance. Shadows, clarity, saturation, and the list goes on. I can apply different radio filters for different things that the photo may need. So for example, if I thought this particular area, uh, the exposure may be okay on that, but maybe it's a little too warm. I can cool that area down a little bit and bring down some of the yellow tint and for coming from the light. So again, complete control with a radio filter that I don't have with simple vignettes. And even with a vignette, it's really just about the shadowing around it and the, and the exposure, not any of these other attributes. And once again, if I click OK, that is all non-destructive. I can always go back in and make any adjustment to any of those that I need. All right, so my next one. And this is, I believe, going to be number five. And this is kind of one of those things that just, until you see it, it just really blows you away. Now, last year at Adobe Max, uh, we introduced or did a sneak peek of a technology called the Blur. And people were just chomping at the bit. When is that going to make its way into Photoshop? Well, it's made its way into Photoshop CC. So what this is, is this is for camera shake, meaning that the camera actually moved, not the image. So those flowers are, are standing perfectly still, but the camera shook a little bit. And this can happen when the camera's just got a long lens on it, it's hard to hold by hand, or you're doing a long exposure, and it's hard to hold by hand, and you get a little bit of that shake which blurs the image. Now in the past, I would have thrown that image away. There's no way I could have used it. But now I go into my filter menu, I come down to Sharpen, and I go to the brand new Shake Reduction. And it analyzes the image, 
it creates a blur estimation region. It shows me where that blur, which direction that blur is happening in, where it detected it. So it's kind of like shaking in the middle there. And I can even add multiple blur regions to have it analyze the photo. And as you can see in this one, the uh, blur in that area is, is kind of going off into the left or off into the right. So the camera shape can affect the photo in different areas in different areas of the photo. And this is analyzing and correcting that for me. So once I click OK, that is my new correction. Here's my before and here's my after. So I took a photo that may not have been usable because the camera shook and I made it usable. That feature alone would be worth it for me for a lot of photos that I've taken on the go or fast moving. Now, I'm going to throw you throw in one more bonus one. And this is kind of one of those production things that people run into all the time. You get a customer that brings you in basically a postage stamp size image and says, can you blow this up to an 8x10? And you kind of cringe because Photoshop, while it can increase the image size, you're going to lose a lot of detail and a lot of sharpness, especially when you're going with a big uh, adjustment. So let's go up to our image size menu. And with image size, I see the original photos, you know, like a three by two business card size at, at um, 240 um, pixels per inch resolution. I can go in and say, and pick a preset. So I can say, hey, the customer wants an eight by 10. And now, before I do that, you'll notice that the resample now is what's new. It's automatic and it's choosing between new algorithms. Whereas Photoshop has typically worked with a bicubic bi bi uh, smoother or scalar, it's now got many more options to choose from and it can automatically detect what's going to be the best one for this image. So if I say make this an 8x10, it will increase the image size, make it an 8x10. And it may not look that sharp here because we're zoomed in all the way on the eye. But let's see what it would have done um, using the old um, enlargement. So that's how much softer it was using the old one versus automatic. So night and day difference, especially when you're blowing an image up and making it larger or you're making an enlargement. So, whoa, there's our new enlargement. I can zoom it back down now. And I have an image that is much more printable and usable high res than I ever had before. And think about the images or screen captures that you do from a video clip where it's limited to the resolution of the video. You know, 1080p, which would be 1920 by 1080. You can now blow those images up even higher and make them more printable. So those are my top five, plus a few more, bonus features of Photoshop CC. And you just got to check it out. Head over to uh, creative or adobe.com slash creative cloud, and you'll be able to check out the brand new Photoshop CC. It's been my pleasure. Thanks. Bye. Uh -huh.